We're live. Hello. Hi, everybody. I'm Amanda Call. This is my channel. Hey, it's Higgins lurking. Thanks for the lurk. Appreciate it. So, uh, yes, this is uh, my comic cover. We have worked on this for three sessions so far already. Three or four. Maybe this is actually part five. I don't. I've lost track. Anyway. <laughs> We are continuing to work on this today. It is all nice and drawn. We've got this lovely uh, blue tone all the way through it. And I have started some of the dark red because this first uh, phase of coloring is basically just laying down a bunch of colors, um, a bunch of like one color all the way over it to try to develop our values. And from there, we'll start doing some local color. So I did a little bit more of the red since last time, um, basically just a little bit waiting for the stream to start here, worked on a little bit more of it just because this uh, takes a long time. And I was like, well, I'm here waiting. I may as well get a little bit done. So we're basically just continuing on trying to build up some more of those values with a little bit of an eye to local color, but not a ton. Mostly we're focusing on building up values. And that's what we are going to continue to work on this evening. In case you missed it previously, what I am working on is the cover to the fourth volume of my comic, Age of Night. I've actually had all of the comic pages for it done for a while. And they're all up online, but I just haven't quite gotten to, you know, compiling it all into a book, which is what I'm working on now because, you know, it's not just the, like, it's not just putting all the pages together. You also have to do things like make a cover and put in other like bonus material and then also do all of the uh, back and forth with the printer <laughs> trying to figure out why are my files not working? Why, what is happening? Why did my proof look wrong? What do you mean there's an error? That process usually takes um, quite some time. And for volume three, I had set like a specific deadline and everything um, of when it was going to release. And I had given myself plenty of time to to get everything done and I had all of the pages done well ahead of time so that I could continue to do website updates without like any interruption and still have like the new book come out and be like ahead of the online updates. Um, that for a number of reasons was just not in the cards this time. I was trying to finish I Am the First. I had a bunch of other stuff I was trying to finish. I have like my part-time day job now as well, which just means I have a little bit less time to do things like crunch on comic pages to get ahead. Not to mention, I did also like really screw myself up when I did that the last time. Hey, Spud. Yes, I did. I did a little bit, a little bit before the camera started rolling this evening. I did a little bit of the red up on this figure and these trees, and I started this figure. Um, but I'm still going to do most of it online. I just did a little bit while I was waiting for the stream to start. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. So last time when I was doing volume three, um, when I did that big sprint on finishing those pages to get ahead, I did also like really screw myself up. I caused a pretty significant uh, tendonitis flare, and that was very uncomfortable and screwed me up for, honestly, like the better part of a year. Because I just did not allow myself enough time to rest during that little stretch. And so we're like, well, I'm like, well, you know what? We're not, we're not going to do that again. We're not doing that.
Hey, it's someone saying, thanks so much for joining me. How is everybody doing? Were folks in, in the eclipse zone? Did you have a good weekend? Were you able to see the, the cool solar event? Uh, it was about 97% in Tulsa and took a, a bad phone photo of it. Well, that's cool. I also took bad phone photos and was like, this is silly. But it was it was very cool. Um, we were... Could only see a partial eclipse in North Carolina. Yeah, we were, got incredibly lucky in that my house was actually in the path of totality. So I actually had friends from uh, Bangor come up and hang out at our place to watch it. Because Bangor is just, just far enough south from us that they weren't going to get the totality. So I had friends come up. We hung out on the front lawn and had snacks and the kids ran around and we all watched the eclipse together and it was very cool. Easily one of the coolest things I have like ever seen. <laughs> It's just so incredible. And it was also very funny, like, as everything got super dark, because we were nearing the full eclipse, and it was just getting, like, that eerie sort of sort of dark everywhere and getting really cold and then all of all of my chickens they were out free ranging and they all went over to the coop and just like stood by the door and were like is it is it bedtime it doesn't feel like it should be bedtime but it got dark so maybe it's bedtime you were just kind of standing next to the coop door, just looking around all confused. Like, what is, what is happening? I don't understand. Oh. And then once the sun came back, they were all just like, oh, okay, never mind then. And went back to pecking around, doing their thing. Speaking of, I'm sure you can hear all the cheep, cheep, cheeping. The cheep, cheep, cheeping in the background. I have over the last week and over the weekend so it was over the course of like probably like four days or so ended up hatching 22 assorted chicks i don't even know what they all are i'm gonna move this out of the way real quick and i'm gonna show you a baby hold on hold on i gotta go get one because they live in my studio hey babes hi no don't freak out you're fine Look, it's your camera. Can you say hi? Boop, boop, boop. You're so soft. You going to show them your pretty eyes? You got. It looks like you have eyeliner on. You have such pretty eyes. Boop. Can you show them? Can you show them your pretty eyeliner? Look at that. Look at the pretty eyeliner on this bird. Okay, I'll put you back. Here you go. All back with your siblings. And now I need to clean my hands because chickens are gross. 
Chickens are gross and full of germs. Gotta get the hand sanitizer action happening. Yes, they're so cute. Um, there's, there's so many. <laughs> there are so many of them. I'm not, not sure what I'm going to do with 22 chicks. It's a lot of chicks. But yeah, that's, that's, uh, so if you hear peeping in the background, that's why. Because I got a whole bunch of little chicky babies hanging out in here with me. Mm, fuzzy babies. Yeah, they're so cute. I have to enjoy while they're still cute and little like that because it doesn't last for very long. And then they turn into like awkward teenager chicks, chickens, and they get all like gangly and just like their, their fluff starts falling out and they start getting feathers and it's all patchy and awkward looking. All right. Hopefully you're starting to see like how this uh, layering of these different colors is helping to give us a value map that we're going to build off of. Oh, I gotta get those those boot fuzzies. 
Very important. Very important boot fuzzies. Oh, someone made an, a very upset peep. Someone went, I am upset, peep. Yeah, and last week was like crazy for weather here too. We had a snow day on Thursday. We got so much snow. It snowed like all day, all night. And like wet, gross snow. It eventually kind of turned over to rain. Oh, I still haven't done your other arm, sir. Whoops. I kind of need that. Might be important. Might be important to have both of your arms. All right, I think I got all of all of Thel now. I do need to sharpen this, sharpen this again. To sharpen very frequently, doing colored pencils. They're so they're so soft, and especially doing like tiny little details. I can't I can't mash them. I gotta make sure I have a nice, sharp, precise point.
Again, having to kind of sneak up on some of these because, like, when very pale. <laughs> Even in the dark, she's going to be pretty pale. And she's wearing white. So, like, yeah, there's obviously color here. I have to still build up these tones, and we're going to do that with all of the same colors, partially because that's kind of how color actually works, and also because that helps to provide a nice cohesive look to the whole piece. Um, but you gotta be real careful. Gotta be real careful to sneak up on it. What is happening? There's like a there's like something just scratching instead of actually marking. What is going on? Hmm. Okay, I think that's all of the bits on when. Yeah, there's like, it's like there's, there was like a, just some weird little piece of something. Oh, it still it feels like it might still be there. Weird. All right. That's annoying. I also want to, especially in like large areas like this, it's a good idea to use the strokes of your color pencil to help to find form, but this is just like a big flat wall. And so I want to make sure that on my different passes that I am alternating the direction that my pencil strokes go in so that it doesn't end up with like a really dominant like sideways, like diagonal look to all of the color if that's not informative of the actual form like it's one thing if for example like and in like kamari's hair these little locks of hair okay they have like a curve to them and so when i'm going to be filling in the color there i'm going to be following that form to help describe it with the color right those actual markings that I'm making with my pencil are helping to further describe the form, not just plop color on top of it, right? But when you have like a big flat surface like this, where I don't want it to be like, it's very easy to just accidentally keep going in the same direction, especially like if you're right-handed doing an upper right corner to lower left corner, kind of back and forth diagonal. Um, but that, if I kept doing that on every pass of color on here, would start making it look like the wall had some kind of diagonal either shape to it or like a pattern on it or something. And since I don't want that, it's a good idea to be conscientious of that and on different passes, try to go in different directions to help keep that looking a little more flat. If flat is indeed what you're going for, which uh, in the case of this wall, it is.
All right, definitely need to sharpen my pencil before I try to do her face because it's getting dull again. I hope that explanation made sense <laughs> and wasn't just me rambling. Okay. Oh, goodness. Goodness, goodness. And we're getting close to being done with the red pass anyway, and then we'll get to do the the yellow ochre pass. All right, yay! And all that I have left is the cat and the wall. We're getting there. 
for this pass. I say all I have left as if there isn't still like a ton of this to do here. And this is still not very early in this whole process. <laughs> hey. All right, same kind of thing here as far as trying to follow the form when it comes to filling in different parts of Drake's body here. Trying to use the direction of the pencil strokes to give an idea of his shape and the fur texture. All that good stuff. All right, what else, what else? Hey, Hungry, how are you doing? Just gonna say, what else is uh, going on right now? I have a couple of weeks of not too, too much going on, which is nice. Give me a chance to get some work done, some stuff done around the house, just general life stuff. All right. Yay, we did the we did the red pass. Okay. So, the last color that we're going to do for this basic tone establishing is going to be a yellow ochre kind of color. This was the raw sienna, is that what I decided on? Wanna... Yes, that is what I decided on. That looks right. I thought that was it from last time. I just couldn't remember. Okay. So, as you may notice, it is basically that we're just doing a dark version of our primaries. So we did a dark blue, a dark red, and now we're doing a dark yellow. And that will give us our basis for 
our values and from there we'll be able to start building up a little bit more with local color which is to say the colors that we want things to actually look like they are Get the sky filled in, which the trickiest part of that is, of course, all of the uh, little areas where it bumps into other stuff. Yeah, so you can see we're starting to get more of like a brown kind of neutral tone underneath everything. It still looks like at this point that my first actual convention of the year is not going to be until the end of May, which is a very unusually late start for me. The main comic and toy con in Portland just did not work out for me this year. So my first show this year is going to be the Odd and unusual. Maine's odd and unusual on Memorial Day weekend in Augusta. And then I have a number of other shows going on this year after that, but that's that's the first one. All right, there's this, the sky. You can see how it has a different tone to it now than the rest of the rest of the piece does. It certainly doesn't look like it's red or blue or yellow at this point. It's just kind of just kind of a little bit of everything. Work a little bit on these trees. Oh, also this past weekend, I went to the Unbound Art Book and Zine Fair in Providence, Rhode Island. This is put on by RISD, the Rhode Island School of Design. Um, and it was in their library. And so it was absolutely gorgeous building, absolutely gorgeous location. Not necessarily an ideal location for a, like, zine fair type thing just because it was very very crowded it was 
a very popular event. There were lots and lots of people there, and there was not a lot of space to move around. They had everybody's tables where all their exhibitors were pretty well packed in. There was not a lot of room to move. Lots of jostling and <laughs> accidentally bumping into people and not being able to move or really look at things sometimes and just being like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, while you like squeeze your way through. So that that was less than ideal, but it was still an extremely cool little event. I bought a few different mini comics, and one of my favorite things about like this type of event that we don't really have around here much anymore is like just the the really like different and experimental stuff and people doing just not the sort of like not making a whole bunch of comics just to sell a whole bunch of comics or like to have a to tell a very straightforward traditional story but to just experiment with the actual like art form and like what what the medium is capable of i really really enjoyed that would i consider would i ever consider dragon con um possibly i don't know if i could get into dragon con I think it'd be cool to go, but I don't know if I could get into it. <laughs> there's there's that. There's a number of those larger cons I have applied to, but I never get in. I never get in. At best, I get waitlisted, and then I still don't get in. I got rejected from... Emerald City, or waitlisted for C2E2, got waitlisted for TCAF, got waitlisted for MICE last year. Or no, wait, I got rejected for MICE last year. My friend got waitlisted, and he thought that waitlisted was just the nice way that they told people they were rejected. And I was like, nope, I got rejected. <laughs> you actually got waitlisted, sir. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I do have to apply for MICE again this year. I did not do that yet and I need I need to do that but they did this did this whole thing where you have to like sign up for this whole account now it's not just like send us a link to your comic or send us a link to your portfolio it's like sign up for an account with our service and then uh upload your your submission to your account on our service and it's like I absolutely get that this probably makes way more sense for them and will probably make the whole process much more manageable in the long run. But right now I'm just like, oh my god, I have to make an account on a new thing. <laughs> it just puts the uh, the executive function bar to entry a little bit, a little bit high. But yes, Jason, I would love to go to Dragon Con if Dragon Con would have me. That would be fun. I think I'm already committed to something the weekend of Dragon Con this year, but in in the future, I'll I'll have to try to apply, see what happens. Then I'll see if I can add rejected by Dragon Con to my list. <laughs> we Scad should pay for me to visit. Scad should pay for me to visit. You should tell them that. Go talk to whoever's in charge of stuff. Uh, Dove is still the 
department head, I think, of the sequential department. The same professor that I had for my senior project where I first started Age of Night a long, long time ago. You should go uh, visit the sequential building and tell Dove, hey, you know who would be great to have show up here for like a comic art forum or whatever, or just because would be me. I actually ran into Dove at Heroes Con last year. He was there repping SCAD. I don't know as he entirely remembered me, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, he did eventually, but it wasn't like, oh my gosh, I remember you. It was like, okay, remember this was the project. It was back in this time. You're my senior project professor. Had to like give a little prompting. All right. Yay. I have a figure. He's looking good. Wouldn't let me in if I tried to sneak past the literal children and a sassy security guard. The key system now is also an obstacle. Oh, you can't just like wander in with an alumni ID anymore. I used to wander in all sorts of places with an alumni ID. You just kind of flash it. They didn't really pay attention. And even sometimes they'd be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm an alumni. I'm allowed to be here. And they'd be like, oh, okay. Because, <laughs> like, technically, yeah, I could, go in, I could go into any of the class buildings. It's fine. There was no reason I couldn't. I was allowed there. I didn't always necessarily have a reason to be there, but I was technically allowed there. So is my oh use free free trustees tickets nice. It was like the only thing you couldn't get into with just a regular any old regular ID was like dorms. That was about it. Which understandable. You shouldn't be able to just wander into dorms. People live there. But oh well. No reason you shouldn't be able to, like, go into an academic building as an alumni. Anyway, I don't know. Whatever. I'm not surprised that they've gotten more stringent about that. All right. We're in the last 10-ish minutes of the stream. So as I continue to work on this, we're going to do the YouTube things, and I'm going to remind you that I'm Amanda Call, and this is my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm usually here on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern, working on some sort of art. So if you like that, you should, you should like the video, and you should subscribe so that you can not miss it if I go live at some other strange time, or if you just forget about Tuesday sometimes. Um, or also sometimes I can't make it for whatever reason and then I'll post, I'll make a little post on my channel saying, hey, I can't make it or I have to reschedule and it is a good way to stay informed of that as well. What I am often working on on this channel and what I'm sort of working on tonight is my webcomic, Age of Night, 
You can read all of Age of Night online for free at ageofnight.com. That's A-G-E-O-F-N-I-G-H-T dot com. Updates just about every Wednesday. And while you can read the whole thing for free, there's also other cool ways that you can help support me in my attempts at making artwork. I have Patreon, patreon.com slash Age of Night, spelled just the same as the website. Patrons always get their comic pages a week early. As well as getting to see pages in progress, other behind the scenes sneak peeks, other stuff that I'm working on. You get free comics just for signing up. All sorts of good stuff. And I super appreciate it. It's just very helpful to me. If you're not so much into the continuing subscription model and instead just want to do a one-off donation or tip, I also have a Kofi, Coffee, Kofi, whatever you want to call it. Kofi.com slash Amanda Callart. And you can also buy the first three volumes of my comic. I am working on the cover to volume four, which will be available soon TM. As in, I know sometime soon, because obviously I'm working on the cover and all of the comic pages are done. But I don't know when exactly I'll be done compiling it and release it. Because that's kind of a, kind of something I'm working on in between many other actually pressing things with deadlines. But you can get those in all your usual online places, such as Amazon or drive through comics, fiction, and RPG. You can also get digital copies from skirmisher.com. You can order copies. You can, you can like buy signed copies of the physical book from me at a convention, except I'm not doing any of those until like the end of May. So you might have to wait for that. What else? Oh, if you want to follow me anywhere else on the internet and see what I am up to, I am on most of the different social medias to varying levels of activity or non-activity as either Amanda Call Art or Age of Night. All right, I'm just going to finish this wall, and then that's going to do it for tonight. Okay, so we have gotten a lot more done on building up our, our value. I'm going to pull this back a little bit so you can get more of, like, the whole picture. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, we've gotten a lot more work done on the basic values, the value map, so to speak, um, still got a little ways to go. We still have to finish the yellow pass on the figures down here, uh, but we have made a lot of progress this evening, so hopefully next time we'll be able to start some local color and you'll get to see how this is really going to come together. So thanks everybody for hanging out with me. I will see you all next time. Bye. <laughs>